Welcome Flip Clock fans. We're looking at a Panasonic today. This is the Panasonic model RC6003. This is a well-known clock in flip clock circles. For one thing, it appeared in a TV show on CBS. The show was Elementary, Season 1, Episode 20. And there it is. It's called Dead Man Switch. But more famously, it is known as the No Country for Old Men flip clock. There you see Sheriff Ed Tom Bell has a flip clock. But if you notice, it says 7.57 and the clock above the door says 10 minutes to 10. So I think he's got a flip clock that does not work. And that's okay, because so do we. And typically, the problem is the motors, and we're going to look at specifically how to deal with this clock. So I got this clock because I wanted to give it to someone for Christmas. But I've got to get it working first. I like to give the clocks a good once over, see what I'm dealing with. The clock is in really good shape. No chips, just a couple scratches here and there, but it happens to be pretty dirty. And it's got that haze that a lot of these clocks have over the years. So the radio is working, but not real well. You can see that there's a problem with that switch. A little bit with the volume, but mostly that FM AM switch, it needs to be cleaned. We'll test the alarm. As you can hear, it comes out of the speaker. And that's how you'd set it if you would alarm to music. That is the sleep function, but that's not going to work because our clock's not working. That's dependent upon the movement of the clock mechanism. You can see it's a pretty raucous flipper. But here's something interesting. It says Japan on the number 11, and where most clocks will say it on the 00. And we can see here, we've got some cobwebs in there, a little cocoon or something, and again, the haze. So this clock has to be cleaned. So getting into this clock is not that much of a trick. We have two screws on the back that need to come out. After that, it's pretty self-evident. You want to pry it up from the bottom gently. And it just comes right out, so it shouldn't have any problem there. And it lifts right out. This back here, it's like a, it's like a fiber board. It reminds me of the old TVs we used to have back in the day. You want to put this up. You don't want to get oil on this. It'll leave a stain that you're not going to be able to get off. So put that up someplace safe. So our first look here, I don't know if you can tell, but it's pretty dusty in there. No major burnouts, nothing obvious, no shorts that I can see. No live bugs, which is always a blessing. They've moved on. So to get this out, the first thing we want to do is get this speaker unhooked. So you'll unscrew those two screws there. And then there's four screws on the bottom. Now I do this first, but I would recommend getting the knobs off first. Just four screws and they have washers. The older clocks had a lot of washers and lock washers. The later they didn't bother with all that. So this is one of the earlier clocks built more solid than some of the later ones, more famous ones. The speaker just pulls forward a little bit. There's a little hook in the back. It comes right off, and you want to lay that there carefully as you, as you, uh, before you get ready to pull that whole bunch of mess out of there. Okay, again, the knobs pull straight away. Some of them are tighter than others. This one here in particular. And what I have done in the past is use a blow dryer or something to get a little bit of heat in there, but don't overdo that. You will melt that plastic. Just something to warm that up. Maybe sometimes gets that off a little better. You want to avoid the temptation to try to pry that, especially putting a, a screwdriver or something inside the clock and prying that. I'm going to later put some lithium grease in there to make it maybe a little easier to get off next time. 
see some dirt there. That's going to come off with soap and water later. Some grime. So there's dust, bugs, and people grime. Part of the hazards of working on these clocks. So the posts on the top there are kind of holding us back. I'll just push that in a little bit and slide this tray out. That was part of the speaker bracket fill out there now you can see it's just hazy in there when they put this together they glue they use this stuff I call horrid black glue to glue the faceplate tabs don't I wouldn't try to get that out you're gonna accidentally scratch uh, move your tool forward and scratch that and you're not gonna be able to fix that but so we're gonna I'm gonna show you how to clean that without having to take that off here's our speaker pretty dusty over the years I'm gonna gently dust that off I'm gonna show you a few things I don't usually show you during the flip clock restorations I've shown you in the past I just use a like a little paintbrush a little soft brush you can use a soft toothbrush but uh, just be careful take your time now what I highly recommend is protect that speaker because we're not going to disconnect it these can get damaged I hate to say I have damaged them in the past so I'm just using a little tissue you could use some bubble wrap or something like that and just put it inside of a little baggie keep it all together you still got to be careful with it there's a lot of things poking up here okay so there's a little felt thing I like to take those off because they tend to get lost and put it up but I'm going to tell you, you'll probably put it back together without that. And you'll have to take it apart again. Okay, this switch, this is the problem we saw earlier. You're going to get some electric contact cleaner spray. And spray that down in there. And then work it back and forward. That'll, that'll fix that right up. That's the tuner knob. This is the volume. It's called a potentiometer. And if that's scratchy or popping, you want to get that same contact spray with a little tube connected to it and spray right up under the bottom here and then work that back and forth to clean that out. Now here's our, where I think the problem is. Now, these little Copal 2 motors, they'll, they go counterclockwise when they spin and it's not spinning. It's moving, but it should be moving freely. And we'll show you that more closely here in a little bit. Now I thought this was a neon glow bulb, I, but I, now I can see it's just an incandescent bulb. It happens to glow a little bit kind of orange because I don't think they've got it fully powered, just the way they had it. Now something here, this is a dangerous clock to work on if you're working on it live. Right there, that's full 120 volts coming in there. So if you're working on this when it's live and you set it down on a tool, you're going to short something out or hurt yourself. So I don't recommend you running these clocks while you're having them apart like this, but you're gonna see me doing that sometime, but please don't try that. I'm trying to do that for demonstration purposes during this video, but this is, they are dangerous. Okay, so we got two nuts that need to come off there. Now I love this little cut down little monkey wrench. You can get them on Amazon. I use this a lot. It helps to break break these nuts loose. They have put some some kind of a stick tight, like a some kind of this is a better thing, it's a socket. It's a 5.5 millimeter. It it basically fits. But they've put something on there to stop them nuts from backing out, like a Loctite or what would have passed for Loctite in the day. It looks like fingernail polish or something like that. So it makes it a little hard to get off at first. Subsequently they go on a little easier. I don't think it's actually necessary to try to replace that. They would have had to do that for shipping and such. So there's the designation of this motor. Again, it's a Copal 2, which is it's a really awesome little motors, but this just happens to be this particular configuration with the uh, gearbox and all that. Now I have worked with these before in the past on another clock, the way these wires come in like that. I've had one short out on me before. Look here, you can see this This is supposed to be spinning freely. These wires come into the back of the gearbox there. 
and with if you manipulate that too much I think it can break loose and cause a short it happened to me once and I'm checking to see if there's any wobble too much wobble in there sometimes if they've been run a lot that can be a problem that you really can't fix I think a lot of the problem with these clocks getting stiff like that is because right there is an axle and then that's the only thing that really turns this wheel on the outside turns on that axle and I think these clocks have sat for some time and stiffened up so I think clocks like get like this that have been put up for a while so the trick is how are we going to get that freed up and I think it's just the oil has gotten kind of dried out and stiff and if you watch any of my other videos, you know I dunk these in alcohol, or I used to, and I've moved away from that for several reasons. And what I'm going to show you here, a lot of people think sacrilege or blasphemy. I'm going to show you what I'm going to use and I'm going to tell you it works. And I trust it more now than I do the alcohol. So give me a little bowl here to catch my mess. Yep. WD-40. It's really good at cleaning this stuff out. It's kind of a, got a solvent property, but it's not going to allow alcohol to get up in that gearbox and screw up any oil that they have to use in there. People ask me about oil in that gearbox. You'd have to drill a hole in there or try to take it apart. These motors were just not made to be ma maintained like that. You can try to do all that, but I promise you, you're never going to get it back the way it was. So I spent a lot of time just, again, cleaning that out, spraying that down in there. And what'll happen, I believe, is that the, the oil will work its way into that, onto that shaft and back in there. And I'm just, we're just kind of loosening it up. And you'll see as time goes on, that loosens up a little more and more. I'll probably spend a total of about three to five minutes doing this, what you see me doing here. There's no rush. I have energized this clock, which I've told you not to do, but you can see that it didn't come on right away, and that's still a problem, so it's not done yet. That's not going to work. You send this off to somebody, and they plug it in, and it won't work. So we've got to get that cleaned out a little more. Sometimes what I'll do, and what I'm going to do in this case, is I'm going to oil it up again, I'm going to put some more WD-40 in there, and then get it spinning, and let it sit and spin for a while. Again, the idea being it's going to work its way on that shaft. So I'm just going to position this and just let it work it, you know, warm up and work, work that in there a little bit. Now that's getting better. You see how I stop it with my finger and it, and it restarts right away. And that's just from, you know, like, like I said, letting it work its way down that shaft. I'm going to let it work. I'm going to let it sit and work a little bit more here. Now it's already running like a champ, but that's just with WD-40. So you want something a little more, a little more lubric with better lubricant properties and staying power than WD-40. So we want to get a light synthetic oil down in there onto that shaft. And there's a lot of different oils you can use. You can use a synthetic motor oil, believe it or not. Look at the difference here and it's not powered on right now. Huge difference. In this case, I'm gonna use this um, clock oil. It's a synthetic clock oil. And I'm gonna drop it in one of those holes, aiming down towards that shaft. So in my mind, I'm, I'm getting that drop back down behind there. I'm trying not to over oil it because that's going to get on the inside of that wheel and potentially hold dirt and grime. And it, and it will slow it down a little bit at first until that oil hits that spot and starts working its way down that shaft again. So I may let it run again after that. Well, this is before. And 
and after. Not a, not just a little different, it's a lot different and better. So this should fi fix the whole problem. Now this is something I very rarely show. I'm gonna show you how I actually clean this. And I like to use ammonia, but this is straight ammonia. You gotta be very careful. See this Panasonic and the, and the stripe around there? This happens to be in really good shape. I believe that, that ammonia, especially straight ammonia, can actually work that chrome off there. So you have to be very careful and you may even just want to use like Windex that has ammonia in it. Now this is Dawn dishwashing liquid and I'm a big believer in this Dawn stuff for a couple reasons because it works really good and it rinses really clean. So I'm just washing things out in here. And then I'll take it and just like a washing machine, just back and forth like that. And that actually by itself will do a whole lot to get that clean, get some of those spider webs out. Now, in this case, there's some, that's a little, just a couple of few drops of, of ammonia in there. There's that, this kind of an oily black smoke. I think it's like an electronic type smoke. That's all I can know to call it. It's that it causes that haze. And you notice I didn't leave it in there very long. That's potent stuff, that ammonia, and it'll just dissolve that stuff. And I quickly rinse and then go back again with the Dawn to make sure there's no trace of ammonia that's going to rest on my chrome and screw it up. And then a lot of water you see is used, copious amounts of water. And then a lot of rinse. Now later I uh, can use distilled water to, for the final rinse so that we don't have spots on the inside of the glass. And there it is. It cleaned up really nicely. Our knobs look really good. Shiny chrome knobs just with soap and water. Flipping great. There it is, the Panasonic RC6003, the No Country for Old Men flip clock, or the elementary flip clock. Thanks for watching.